So anyway. What was the last thing you caught him saying? Uh, the guy walked into your office. Okay, so this guy walks into my office. He's like, Matt, I just want to give you guys. He calls me Mr. Matt. Mr. Matt. Like, Mr. Matt, I just want to give you a heads up to let you know that my girlfriend is trying to get me. It's just that she's going to try to get me fired. And I was like, what? He's like, well, this, she's like, she's like, I've been, I've been, I'm a black man. That's what he says. So I'm a <laughs> black man. And I've been, I've been messing with this white girl now for three years. Crazy white bitches. Yeah. And she, she, she wants to get me fired. She said she's going to call Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie's her HR lady. And send her, send her these texts and yada, yada, and do all this stuff. And she's going to try to get me fired. I was like, all right, well, I'll make a note of it. Whatever. So that was the end of that. The next day, I'm like, you know what? I got a good night's sleep. I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to work early. So I get there at, at six thirty, supposed to be there at seven. I was just sit in my office and relax for a little bit, maybe, you know, sort of feel intranet, whatever I, whatever you know, supervisors do when you're not looking. And uh <clears throat> I hear, Mr. Matt <laughs> I'm like, Yeah? He's like, We got a problem. I'm like, What is it? I'm just sitting in my office waiting. And he, he comes to my office door and he's like, my girlfriend's here. And she, she says she called the police on me. I'm like, your girlfriend's here? What do you mean she's here? He like points to where I can't see. He's like, she's standing right here. <laughs> so I'm like, God damn it. I didn't say that. But I got up and she was standing right there telling me that he had a warrant and she called the police on him. What? <laughs> and... uh so I escorted, I walked with her out the building. I, I uh, followed her to her car. Or no, I didn't follow her. I waited till she got in her car. And I've never, again, something I've never dealt with at work. So <laughs> I, I go to Jesus. I'm like, what the hell do I do? So I go back out to her car. And I was like, what's your name, ma'am? And she just ignores me, puffing on a cigar. Because she's a classy bitch. Classy white bitches. And, was uh, this today? No, this was yesterday. Oh, okay. And I was like, what, what's your name, ma'am? And she just ignored me. Her door's wide open. I know she can hear me. I said, well, my name's Matt. I'm the distribution supervisor here. And I just want to let you know that, first of all, you're not authorized to be in our building. Second of all, if you're going to bring drama here, you need to be out on Florida Mining Boulevard, the street that runs along our building. I said, you can't bring it to this parking lot. And she's like, I'm not bringing drama. I'm just sitting here waiting for the police. I said, you called the police. Without you, there would be no drama here. Could you please move your car to the street outside? And she's like, she she repeated herself, I'm not doing nothing, I'm just sitting here waiting for the police. He has a warrant and he needs to go to jail, yada, yada, yada. So, uh, I was like, I understand all that, but you can't be bringing this, you can't bring, you call the police to our facility. You're bringing drama to our facility. Could you please move your car to you can wait for him out at the entrance of the parking lot? I don't have a problem with that, but you can't be in this parking lot. We're responsible for whatever happens here. And uh, she, with a with, uh, human attitude, she's like, all right, fine. So I walk back towards the building. I stand there for like two minutes waiting for her to leave, and she doesn't. And again, this is not anything. I'm, I, I'm perfectly willing to call the cops on this bitch. I don't give a fuck. I the, <laughs> cops, the, the, the cops are coming anyway. I mean... I'll just be like, she's trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> so I go back into Jesus. I'm like, ah, this is above me. Like, I've never had to deal with anything like this. I don't know how to handle this. So he comes out to the parking lot with me. And as we enter, exit the, the, the facility, she's like, all right, Matt, I called the police and I told them that you killed the guys don't want me here. So I'm going to go move to the outside perimeter. Meanwhile, her man knows about the three little piggies. <laughs> And knows that drama is has a zero tolerance with us. So he already left. Like, he started walking towards the street because he didn't want to deal with her. Um, the funny thing is, is he takes the bus to work. And he actually got a ride that morning from, from another, from a co-worker. So she followed him there. <laughs> what a bitch. Yeah. So we give it, we give it, no, this wasn't yesterday, it was the day before yesterday. So we know we have to talk to him just like we talked to the three little piggies. We gave him a chance. We said, you know what? Any personal drama, you have to take it off the premises. Uh, if it's work-related, we're more than happy to help you. So uh, this evening, we called him in to my office just to give him the same spiel. Like, uh, like this is what's going on. Like, you, we know you understand that we can't have this happen again. This is not going to be good for anybody, you know. And 
he said he understood, and he just want, he wanted to give us the whole play by play, the whole story. And uh, one of the things he said was that this is he, he, with Jesus sitting right there, my boss, right there. He's like, "This white bitch is crazy. You know what it is? It's white bitches. It's white women. Like I've been fucking with her for three years." And it's white women. She's fucking crazy. She's just a white woman. <laughs> like, <laughs> repeatedly said that. And he's like, I don't mean to offend anybody, but it's white women. <laughs> and she's like, her whole family's re- like just rednecks and all this kind of stuff. And all I can think is it takes a certain type of white woman to want to be with. Like, it takes a certain personality. <laughs> the crazy ones. So... I, I, like, I feel like he's a good worker. Like, I want to keep him around. But all I can think of is if your woman tried to get you arrested, she's fucking around on you. Dump she her ass. <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm trying to get away from her. I'm trying to get away, but she's just so involved. She wants me to be a father figure to her kids. I'm like, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. I don't need to know everything. Wow. So, yeah. So uh, he eventually was able to get him to stop talking and leave my office. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it it takes a certain personality to put up. I mean, I'm not saying put up with or anything like that, but... Did you ever say what the warrant was for? I don't remember. She said, she said what it was for, but she had her back to me. She was walking away, so I really couldn't hear her. But, uh, (laughs) that, that has been the first two weeks that we've been open with associates in the building. Definitely a lot, lot more different personalities that I'm used to dealing with, but I told one of my leads, because he, he could tell that I was taken off guard. I told him, I said, you know what, just give me six months, I'll be used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so that's it, that's my story. No wonder you've been so tired. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. But I wanted to wait till you recorded just so I could tell you that. I thought you might like it. It was entertaining. Yeah. <sighs> Other than that, um, not a whole lot going on. Nope. Gas prices are amazing. Awesome. But uh, even though gas prices are lower, my insurance has gone up like 30 bucks a month, so it kind of evens it out. <laughs> <laughs> I finished book two in the Harry Potter series today. I'm going to start book three. (laughs) That's my week. (laughs) You need to come out with me at work. I know! (laughs) I need to get out of this fucking house. (laughs) You come stir the pot. I'd be like, I don't know her. Be like, like white bitches like me? Yeah, just get all up in his face. Be like, what you talking about, white bitches? (laughs) Smoking on that cigarillo. Cigarillo. (laughs) Man, if he, if he wants to see a crazy white bitch, I could be a crazy white bitch. Trust me. And I think, like, the three little piggies, like, that third one that was all sneaky and shit, the problem, uh, the, the good thing is that we're, they're in their 90-day period. We can just dump them for no reason. I know people like her, too. Yeah, the thing is, they're super sneaky. So if we, if we went past her 90 days, then she would be pulling this shit all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And we'd have to go through the process. And it's, it's hard to catch somebody like that who just wants to stir the pot and sit back and eat their popcorn, you know? I know several people like that, actually. I'm one of them, but... No. I used to You're be not, like, bad. conniving. No, I wouldn't. Like, no, I would just come straight out and say, like, hey, this guy said this about you. No, like, women, right women are, like, conniving about it and, like, bitchy about it. Oh, yeah, these three little pigs were women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they were women. <laughs> they were women. <laughs> of course they were. Yeah. I know, I worked in warehouses where the it's all men, and they are worse than women. Like, way yeah. worse than women. Yeah. Got a package from Ron today. Got some rocks in it. Got some rocks in it. It's the rock of the month. <laughs> and some dresses. Pair of shorts, pair of jammies, um, some pictures of her, the kitty and the pupper, um, a bracelet that I have always loved since I can remember, and now it's mine. <laughs> um, Fell off when she was packaging it up. She's like, "Oh my god, no!" <laughs> no, but really though, 
Um, and like this little like, it's like dice that you roll and you, you it like helps you create stories. You can make bedtime stories, tell each other. Aww. I have enough stories. I don't want to hear stories about bitches and warrants. You kind of do though. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's still sick. It's because of the Himera. I take a medication that affects my immune system. There's always an excuse. I'm not. It's getting better. Mhm. Mm started feeding their live mice. I'm actually like surprisingly okay with it. Like, That's what it is. I say a little thank you to the mouse for his little sacrifice, and then we feed, feed him to the snake. <laughs> like, thank you, mouse. Uh, you're about to get eaten, but uh, you're keeping my snake alive, so that's good. And he's been eating every week. He loves it, so. Gizmo's been having a problem with uh, scabs on his back. Yeah. They first started appearing when, when we got Hash, so I thought maybe Hash was just nipping at his back. You know, that's what cats do to dominate each other. But, uh, if you even worse. If you look, though, like, if you, like, catch them when Hash, like, puts his nose in the gizmo, he doesn't actually bite him. No. So we figured it was, uh... His was, nails. Yeah, so we trimmed his nails real good. It's getting better, but it was pretty bad. Like, I was this close to taking him to the vet. I was really upset about it. We had to give Hash another bath. Yeah, we realized what it was. He's, he's got a shitting problem. He's got a shitting problem. <laughs> we were feeding him uh, in, the, uh, in the in the Reno apartment. We were feeding him uh, wet canned food. We call he, it tuners. Yeah, we were feeding him tuners, and uh, it, it has a problem in exiting his 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 uh, butt anatomy. His, no, his butt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so. I, I was at home and I noticed that one of them pooped on the floor in the dining room. So I'm like, oh, it's just their litter box, you know, needs to be cleaned. So I cleaned it, picked everything up, whatever. And then um, a little bit later on that day, I noticed that whenever you went to like try to touch his tail or try to touch his butt, he would meow at you, which he only does when he has you poopies stuck in. I completely forgot the lead up to this story. I was starting that and then you skipped ahead. Like in the Reno apartment, we were feeding him tuners all the time, and he had the same problem, where his uh, gets stuck to his butt. We stopped giving him tuners. We he started giving him just dry food, and we and everything was fine. We thought maybe it was a change in the uh, humidity or whatnot. Something helped. But then we got a package of wet food again, and we gave that to him, and the problem came back. Right. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're assuming it's the... Wet the tuners that's giving him the uh, shitting problems. The poops. But anyway, um, when Matt came home, he was on the we were on the couch with the kitty, and you know I told Matt about the problem, and so he laid Hash on his side and lifted his leg, and there was metal, like sticking out of his butt. Yeah. And I like freaked out. So we got the tweezers, and uh, I used my phone as a flashlight, and. What was it? It was a wrapper from a candy bar. Like, not even a whole wrapper. Just, like, the part you tear off when you want to get, get to the good stuff. Yeah. So, in the, but I also noticed that he had, like, poopies clumped on his butt, so we gave him a bath. He was really good about it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. What are you doing? Who is that? Who is that pretty kitty? Is that you? Say hello. I have a pooping problem. Oh, look at the face. Oh, look at the pretty face. We're obsessed with our cats. It's a problem. Not my problem. It's a problem, really. Hash brown. Are you going to stick out your tongue? Are you going to do it? I can't think of anything else. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. I go to work at 5 a.m. tomorrow, but that was our opener. That was the opener. Um, probably just gonna let him sleep all day tomorrow. Me? Yeah. I'll be at work. Um, after that. After 11. Yeah. Maybe we'll try to drive through pizza joint. <laughs> We had firehouse subs for dinner. It was really good. We've been trying to find a place that's like uh, Deli, Deli Town, Town, but no, none of you have ever been to Deli Town, so. So you don't even know. You, there's no way you could. You know. don't even know. There's no way you could know. No. And uh, uh, next door there was a. Uh, are you game? Are you game? Like are you the letters? Are you game? <clears throat> and it's. Um, a retro video. Retro, game it's cool. Yeah. They sell like consoles for like Nintendo and uh, Sega Genesis and all that, and they sell games. Consoles for from the late 80s and the early 90s. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just gonna have a nice, relaxing evening. Okay. Have some crappy ice cream that we bought from Winn Dixie. getting dry. Mm. Your eyes balls. My balls getting dry. So, that's my life as a supervisor. <laughs> Hooray! Dealing with piggies and warrants. Piggies and warrants. And warrants for piggies. Yeah. It takes a certain tap. Okay then. I got nothing else. Yeah, I got nothing else either. All right. Waited for two weeks. To waited two weeks for that. <laughs> Woo! It was worth it. Hope that was worth it. Good night. Good night.